was cracking big dogs welcome bike to the channel welcome bike to the headquarters my name is nicholas this is bdg big dogs gotta eat and today we have one of my uh one of my favorite episodes of the summer bust proof players okay we're talking about we're talking about that nice safe redone wood persian rug floor we ain't falling through it okay these are bust proof players guys who if you draft you know what you're getting, you know that floor, you know the point totals you're getting week in and week out. They will not disappoint you. Sometimes you just need a player that'll anchor your team, right? You're emotionally unstable. Maybe it's uh maybe it's some trauma from a past relationship you've had with a fantasy player. You've been hurt too many times. Keeps keep making the same mistake over and over and over again. So you're looking for a sure thing. I'm sorry, this is getting too personal. Think about think about Animal last year, right? In his tight end spot. The guy probably had more weeks of, of zero points in his tight end spot than he had tight end one weeks. That's legitimately hard to do. If my mother played fantasy football, she'd She'd have done a better job than Animal did in the E-Town get down last year, okay? Sometimes you just want that stability, man. Sometimes you want players who are safe. You can go for ceiling in the beginning. You can go for ceiling in the end. But in the middle of the sandwich, maybe you want high floor players. Maybe you want bust-proof players because the middle of the sandwich, you don't want your fucking burger meat to be undercooked. That's the problem there. So we're going to run through with no positional focus, just a handful of players who I think are bust proof for the 2021 fantasy football season. All right. And I asked you guys on Instagram, make sure you're following us at BDGE double underscore. That's where you can find us on all the social platforms, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, all the nonsense that the kids are uh, dabbling with these days. And the most popular answers when I asked you guys who your bust proof players were for the year included Calvin Ridley, Bobby Trees, Nick Chubb, Keenan Allen, Travis Kelsey. We fucking knew that already. All right. A lot of the times you're not going to, you know, we're not going to include guys like Christian McCaffrey and all the high end players that, you know, are going in the first round. We're going to try to give you guys that maybe are a little bit lower down in drafts. And uh, and some of the guys that you picked are actually on this list already. All right. So fuck you. You guys are good. There's nothing more I can do here. We're ready to roll. We're going to tuck our shirts in. We're going to stop yelling we're about the. Before we kick things off, I want to make an announcement that I made yesterday and that I will continue to make for the week until the league is filled up. I think we have maybe two spots left in the in the NYC BDGE draft weekend. 11 subscribers are coming out to New York City at the end of August. It is August 27th to August 29th. We've already rented out a wild ass Airbnb. OK, you guys are going to fly out. We're going to party for the entire weekend. I'm going to show you New York City. I'm going to show you Manhattan. If you've never been here, this is the prime opportunity to do so. We're going to have a live fantasy football draft in the Airbnb, which means we're playing against each other in a redraft league for the 2021 season. The rest of the weekend will be filled with debauchery and a bunch of fucking ratchetness. And I will show you the parks of NYC. I will show you the bars of NYC. I will show you the the coffee and the margaritas and the females or the males, depending on whatever you're into. We don't discriminate any, any here. If you're a female, you can come to the weekend if you're not. But this is going to be the third annual BDGE NYC draft weekend. Live draft. 11 subs coming out here. You get to meet me. You get to meet the entire Big Dogs Gotta Eat crew. If you've been following us for a long time, this is the primo opportunity. This is the coolest thing that we've done as a brand, in my opinion, getting to meet you guys live and in person. We become fucking brothers by the end of the weekend. Only a couple spots remain. This is an expensive weekend, by the way. So if you ain't been saving up the cash you might not be able to get a spot in this league it is not a money hungry grab the fact of the matter is new york city is just fucking expensive and it stinks but the weekend is a whole lot of fun if you're interested in learning more we will uh drop the links to the vlogs of the first two years that we did it so you can watch those videos and get a feel for what the actual weekend is about and then i will link the form below of how to actually sign up for the weekend or apply for the weekend because we will be uh filtering out some of the weirdos to make sure that we have a really good time there okay you must be 21 or older or have a really good fake id oh Hey, uh, didn't see you guys standing right there. It's been quite a while since you last saw this face. And for those of you who don't remember, or who are new to the channel, I'm Pierce, the sixth place finisher in the 2019 NYC League. I guess this is a good time to give this public service announcement to uh, all the players in the league, new players, old players. Just know, I'm coming for that ass. Respectfully. Of course. <laughs> and 
for those of you who watched the last draft weekend, you guys know we had a good ass time. I mean, a good ass time. And that was only the things that you guys saw. YouTube definitely didn't allow us to put everything that happened up. But since we missed last year, we're definitely gonna have to make up for some lost time. So expect shit to get even crazier this time around. You're not gonna wanna miss it. Either. Let's get into the bus proof players. Let's start at the quarterback position, man. And it is Mr. Tommy Smokes. Tom Brady, terrific Tom, quarterback of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. You might have heard of him. He is currently going off the board as the QB 11, current ADP, past the 100th pick if you're in a one quarterback league. I mean, this dude came into Tampa in a COVID summer, first time in a new system, first time in a new offense, first time with these new weapons, and just ran up the quietest, the quietest 4,640 passing line I've ever I've ever seen and nobody is talking about it right imagine if like Rojo or Leonard Fournette actually had fingers on top of the nubs that they have past their wrists they might he might he might have fucked around with the 5k he might have fucked around with the 5k number there in Tampa Bay last year Tom Brady I, I just feel like Brady is the safest quarterback play in 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 fantasy football this year outside of the guys who have elite rushing upside and elite rushing floors like Lamar Jackson and guys like that so when you look at Tom Brady coming into this year you have the continuity factor which is massive okay and even if you didn't have it we just saw what Tom Brady did 4640 in 16 games now they re-signed everybody on the team they have the entire offensive line coming back they have Mike Evans Chris Godwin Antonio Brown plus all of the other playmakers that are low-key sitting behind them on the depth chart that are perfect depth pieces right the Scotty Millers Tyler Johnson's Jalen Darden now to spread the field it's it's and now they have Gio Bernard too I'm not going to say that that's a big deal but it, it might it might be a little bit of a big deal for Tom Brady like look what he did with James White a couple of years ago or for fucking eight years basically he was on a lifetime contract in uh in uh, new england basically so Gio bernard this offensive line i think is extremely underrated still right they turn the things around and they are looked at as a highly ranked offensive line but i don't think i realize just how just how highly ranked they really are like i was on the undroppables podcast with dino game theory if any of you guys follow him on on, on twitter uh and their team over at undroppables actually has the buccaneers ranked as the number one offensive line heading into 2021. So Tom Brady, the volume might not be there, right? This is something that I've kind of echoed. And it's one of the reasons why I'm not super high on drafting Mike Evans or Chris Godwin, because they're going to need elite efficiency in order to produce, because I don't know if the targets are going to be there, but it might happen, right? I'm not going to bet on efficiency. I'd rather take Antonio Brown like five rounds later, but Tom Brady, man, with these weapons, this offensive line, him just coming off a monster year, so we know what he could do it in this offense. We're not really guessing anymore. Tom Brady, um, I actually think Tom Brady might have been on the bus proof list last year, but he's running a bike and he gets to play the Falcons twice. He gets to play the Panthers defense twice. He gets to play the Saints defense twice, who like lost all their like this is gonna be a ridiculous, ridiculous season from Tom Brady. He might have a completion rate of like eighty nine point seven percent. His touchdown rate might be like nine percent. It might just smash records on an efficiency matter okay Tom Brady quarterback 11 bus proof at that position there's no shot he finishes underneath that he might throw 46 touchdowns this year he might go for 5,000 plus yards Tom Brady lock it the fuck in all right and another popular pick uh by you guys who I also put on this list is Nick Chubb Nick Chubb is absolutely a free square okay and Nick Chubb is still like a back end of the first round, early second round pick. Right now, he is currently sitting at an ADP of 11.5. So basically the last pick in the first round, he is RB1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Right now, those are one quarterback league. So if you play in super flex leagues like I do, Nick Chubb is a clear second round pick. You're probably throwing like four or five, maybe six quarterbacks above those running backs at the end of the first round. So you're probably getting him mid second round, end of second round in super flex drafts. And there is no one more bust proof than Nick Chubb, because if you look at the different different assets that are swirling around in his 2021 fantasy outlook, you have an elite runner, right? By every statistic, every measure, every piece of efficiency, Nick Chubb yards created, elusiveness, just overall efficiency. You know what you're getting from Nick Chubb, one of the best pure runners in the entire NFL. Uh, will probably go down as one of the best pure runners in the history of the NFL when all is said and done just by every single statistic you could look at. So Nick Chubb, hell of a fucking baller the offensive line run blocking unit there was completely turned around last year and it's just going to bring more continuity to the team this year this was an, uh, an offense that was super super efficient under Kevin Stefanski and now it's the second year 
in there. So I expect Baker to be better. I expect the offensive line to somehow be better. Uh, but there is nothing, nothing, nothing bad about Nick Chubb here. Yes, he had the ankle injury last year, but like, listen, fucking running backs. But I don't think you can name a running back that hasn't had an ankle injury in his career. Le- legitimately off the top of my head, I don't know, like C-Mac, yes, Saquon Barkley, Alvin Kamara. Like literally, I don't know if you can name a running back that gets more than like 100 carries in a season that hasn't had an ankle injury. All right, Nick Chubb had his fucking ankle injury. Give him a break. 12 games last year, 1,200 yards from scrimmage, 12 touchdowns. Good Lord. His floor is, if he plays a full 16, 17 games this year, his floor is 1,500 yards from scrimmage and probably double-digit touchdowns. So Nick Chubb, again, absolute free square there. If you start off with a running back in round one and they can get Nick Chubb in round two, Woo-wee! one more time for the folks in the back. Oh, the vocals are hitting today. The vocals are hitting today. It's actually, I'm filming this on July 4th, which is why I'm very ecstatic right now. And something that pissed me off today, I saw on Twitter, Darren Roval, Roval, whatever the Roval, Darren Roval, that's one of the biggest fucking clowns I've ever seen on Twitter. The average American eats 70 hot dogs a year, according to the Hot Dog and Sausage Council. Number one, what the fuck is the Hot Dog and Sausage Council? Who's like on the board? Like Eddie Lacy's on the board of executives. He's the CEO of the Hot Dog and Sausage Council. 70 hot dogs in a year. So you're saying the average American eats a hot dog every five days. That's out of control. Unless you're counting Joey Chestnut in that as the average American. Yeah, You know who's a bust-proof player? Fucking Joey Chestnut. He ain't busting anytime soon. So he's number three on this list. But Darren Roval, like, what are you talking about? I haven't eaten 70 hot dogs in my life, I don't think. That's for, And they got people in the comment section, like, fucking bringing up analytics Kids are throwing the data off. A picky kid who only likes mac and cheese and hot dogs might eat three hot dogs a week all year round. Then throw in adults in the Midwest where we grill out multiple times per week all summer. Plus think Diamond Dog Nights at the baseball stadium. All right. All right, Curtis. I see you. Still 70 hot dogs in a year sounds just absolutely fucking insane. It's insane. I feel like people in Montana, Nebraska, North Dakota probably don't even know what a fucking hot dog is. I don't even think that's a hot take. It's not a hot dog take. We on one today. All right. We got Tom Brady. We got Nick Chubb. Let's keep going down our bus proof player list. And next up on my list, I've, I've talked about this guy like to an annoying extent, probably. And he's someone that y'all are going to continue to yell at me about if I continue to talk about him. I This is the, the tough part about being a fantasy content creator, to be honest with you. I'm, let me just vent for a minute. I started making content like super early on. Obviously, it's the beginning of July and you guys have probably heard like 90 percent of my hot takes. I don't you know, you could only summon so many takes that you actually believe in. Right. Like I don't have a take on every player. I think that's another thing that content creators need to calm the fuck down about. You don't need to have a take on every single player. Right. You could just like a guy or not like a guy or if he ends up falling to you at value, take him, whatever. You don't have to fucking love every single player or hate every single player. I love Keenan Allen. I love Keenan Allen of the Los Angeles Chargers this year. And I've made like seven videos about it, okay? And it's only July 4th. So that means there's still eight weeks left before the fantasy season actually kicks off, which means eight times like six. That's still like 50 videos I have to make at least, right? Plus the shorts that are coming out like two, three times a day. I'm probably going to talk about Keenan Allen. I'll talk about Keenan Allen more times throughout this summer than I've eaten hot dogs in my life. We'll put it that way. Keenan Allen, current ADP 29 overall as the wide receiver 11. Perennially underrated perennially disrespected and now he has an absolutely absolute slinger at the quarterback position with an upgraded offensive line who's got time to let him get open and he's one of the best separators in the nfl like stop it stop it right Hunter Henry is gone. This offense is going to be fast paced. This offense is going to throw the ball a ton. There's nothing not to like here, right? And I've thrown this tweet out 7 million times already. So I'll run through it quickly. If you dismiss week one with Tyrod Taylor under center, you dismiss week 15 where he only played 15% of the snaps because he left with a hamstring injury. Keenan Allen, 16 game pace last year, 181 targets, 126 catches, 1,250 yards, 11 touchdowns. Okay. I don't know what else to say. That floor is unbelievable. He finished last year as the wide receiver 11 in points per game. Half PPR. Wide receiver six in full PPR, okay? There's nothing else to say with Keenan Allen. I know a lot of you guys, here's here's the other thing. I'm getting a lot of, some pushback, right? I like when you guys play devil's advocate. I like when you guys play devil's advocate from a place of logic, when you actually drop some numbers or some stats and whatnot, and then I have to rethink my position. One of the actual good arguments that you guys have made when I've talked about Keenan Allen is look at the splits when Austin Eckler was in the lineup versus when he was not in the lineup, and that's a serious consideration here when Austin Eckler is out there goes seven or eight dump offs a game five to seven dump offs a game whatever the numbers say right because Austin Eckler is a big target guy in that offense and he missed a lot of time last year here's the fucking thing Keenan Allen in games where Austin Eckler played 10 and a half targets in games where Austin Eckler did not play 10 and a half targets yes 
the numbers were down when you look at production that doesn't have to do with volume we guess on volume we don't guess on efficiency okay we project volume and if you're telling me he averaged 10 and a half targets per game with austin eckler 10 and a half targets per game without austin eckler th does the production dip off come from inaccurate throws from justin herbert was it just a luck of the fucking dice that it, it, some of the throws were over his head or he just had a couple unlucky drops in the games when Austin Eckler were there. As long as the volume was the same, I'm not worried about what the actual production was, okay? That's how I'm looking at it. So don't fucking come in here with no Austin Eckler talk. We love Eckler. We love Keenan Allen. We also like Mike Williams this year as a value pick, all right? So again, with Hunter Henry out, I think that raises Keenan Allen's ceiling because he might get more red zone opportunities. Keenan Allen is like the most bust-proof player in the third round that you can grab as your wide receiver one after going bike to bike on some running bikes in rounds one and two. One of the other guys that you guys had on this list who was on my list last year of bus proof players. I'm trying to think of who was on my bus proof players list last year. It was Tom Brady, I'm pretty sure. Bobby Trees, of course. And uh, that's who we're going to talk about in a second. It's Robert Woods. It's like clockwork every single year, right? It's 130 targets. It's 85 to 90 catches. It's 1,100 to 1,200 total yards from scrimmage. He's getting those rushing yards, right? 2018, 19 rushes for 157 yards. 2019, 17 rushes for 115 yards. 2020, 24 rushes for 155 yards. Has scored a touchdown, at least one touchdown in all three of those seasons. The production is the same week in and week out. And now he's got Matt Stafford there. He's going to be a big part of this passing offense. Again, he's going to be one of the funnels of this passing offense. They cannot seem to lock down a third passing option in the offense. It's Cooper Cup. It's Robert Woods. And then behind him, it's like, yeah, we can get excited about Tyler Higby and Gerald Everett, but we've been doing that for four fucking years, and it hasn't turned out well. Uh, I love Cam Akers this year. Y'all know that. I think his target share will be much higher than we've seen from the running back position there in the Rams offense over the last couple of years. But still, the valuable targets, right? Matt Stafford is a slinger of the football, and that will help Robert Woods. That will help Cooper Cup. He will not bust, right? Robert Woods is bust proof. I've made videos saying that I prefer Cooper Cup to Robert Woods, and that is the case because I think both of them are pretty bust proof if you're assuming they're going to stay healthy. You guys might have concerns about Cooper Cup's injury history, which is warranted, validated. My thing with those two is that if they're both going to play well, if they're both going to be the focal point of this passing offense, I think their end of season statistics are going to be very, very similar. OK, I think between targets, receptions and yards, they're not going to be far off. I like Cooper Cup's touchdown upside more than I like Robert Woods which is why I'd rather have Cooper Cup because in the middle rounds of fantasy drafts, all of the wide receivers are going to perform pretty much the same when it comes to like points per game at the end of the season. But if you give someone a high touchdown ceiling, like I believe Cooper Cup has, the projection of him finishing in the top 10 or the top six or five or whatever fantasy wide receivers is a higher likelihood. So I like Cup a little bit more than Robert Woods, but Woods seems like a bust proof player. And the last guy up on this list, we're going to round you out with TJ Hawkinson, tight end of the Detroit Lions, currently going off the board around pick 65, tight end six. I haven't taken a bunch of him in underdog drafts, but every once in a while he drops into the seventh round and that is an easy keyboard breaker. You smash, you smash the draft button on your keyboard when TJ Hawkinson falls into the seventh round. You want to set, you want a safe tight end. You want one that'll give you easily seven to eight half PPR fantasy points per game with the occasional big play or touchdown, you're looking at TJ Hawkinson. Because what targets do they have there? Legitimately, like start to break it down from a common sense standpoint. Marvin Jones, gone. Kenny Galladay, gone. It's literally just TJ Hawkinson, DeAndre Swift, and then trash at wide receiver. Like, yeah, I like Amon Ross St. Brown, but he's like a 12th round pick, guys. Let's not act like Amon Ross St. Brown is already Tyler Boyd, or he's already like a legitimate slot wide receiver in the league. He's a rookie. He's a fourth round pick in the NFL draft. It's it's Amon Ross St. Brown. It's Brashad Perriman. It's Tyrell Williams, like Quintus Cephas. Okay, Animal. Uh, Animal, do yourself a favor and draft TJ Hawkinson, and don't worry about the tight end position again for the rest of the year, okay? Safe as they come from a volume standpoint. I mean, look. Think about it this way, right? Hawkins saw 100 targets last year. There are not many tight ends that see 100 targets in a season, right? He's easily going to hit that this year with the two top weapons out of the offense. And he's probably going to build upon that as more of a focal point in this offense. And we know this offense is going to be a high passing volume offense because they're going to be a bad team overall, which means they're going to be trailing, which means they're going to have to throw the ball a lot. Do I think his upside, do I think he has the upside to break into the top tier? 
Not really, not at this point from what I've seen. I don't think he's like explosive enough on the field or explosive enough with the ball in his hands. Like, I don't think he's a Travis Kelsey type, a Darren Waller type where we will see him break off monster plays. And in order to get to that top tier, like you need to take those 100 targets, those 110 targets and turn it into 1,100, 1,200 yards in order to break into that elite tier. But again, he had 101 targets last year, finished with 720 yards. That feels like a nice floor for him. And I think he builds upon that. Maybe a little bit of touchdown luck, right? We've seen Jared Goff throw to tight ends before. So like Tyler Higby had a fucking three touchdown game last year. Okay. So that seems to be, that seems to be a floor for him going into this year, hundred targets, 750 receiving yards. I think he'll probably flirt between 110 to 120 targets, which probably gets him into that 800, 850 receiving yards range. And then if he scores six to eight touchdowns, you're looking at a really, really solid tight end number season that you're getting in the sixth to seventh round of fantasy, uh, of fantasy drafts and the floor is wonderful. So if you're scared about not getting production at the tight end position, TJ Hawkinson fits perfectly into your lineup. That is the parting words I have for you guys today. All those other guys you listed, I mean, Calvin Ridley's obviously pretty bust proof from a production standpoint. Like we know he's not going to go out there and put duds up, but he's had some trouble staying on the field. I'm not worried about defenses zoning in on him. I mean, he's proven that he could put up elite production with Julio on the field, with Julio off the field. So that's obviously a very locked in pick there. Uh, Ridley is. We talked about Bobby Trees, Nick Chubb, Keenan Allen, Travis Kelsey. I mean, I'm not going to waste with your guys' time talking about Travis Kelsey. You might ask, you know, how early is too early to pick Travis Kelsey? My personal opinion on tight ends, I owned a lot of Travis Kelsey last year because I was able to get him at the 2-3 turn in fantasy draft, so that obviously worked out well. But when you don't get the value there, when you're just drafting a guy based on where he's going to produce, it's tough to actually jump ahead of your league mates in fantasy production okay so Travis Kelsey first round I'm off that I don't I do not want to be taking Travis Kelsey in the first round that's just my roster construction opinion I don't like taking tight ends in the first round because then you you set yourself back at the running back position pretty pretty fucking heavily there so if he drops like the end of the second round or something which he will not be doing in fantasy drafts that's where I'd be okay pulling the trigger on Travis Kelsey so I won't own a lot of Travis Kelsey this year safe play of course but I don't really want safe plays in the first round of fantasy football that is my piece. If you want to be a part of the NYC Draft Weekend, the NYC BDGE Draft Weekend, one of the funnest draft weekends of the year, one of the funnest weekends of the year overall. It's also my birthday weekend, so you know we're balling out at uh, on, on the Saturday night that happens during the draft weekend, which we do not typically talk about or film because because we, we have some fucking naughty people in the draft weekend, all right? Naughty fucking people. I'm going to have to sign up. I'm going to make them sign a waiver that if they die, it's their fault. If he dies, he dies. I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. But if you're interested, go watch the vlogs below. I will link the form to apply down below as well. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit the thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new. Tomorrow's video is going to be... I don't know. I don't fucking know what tomorrow's video is. Just tune in. Just subscribe to see it. I'll see you later.